Okay, in this video, I am going to teach you how to bar graph and show you the vocabulary that goes with it. Okay, so to start out, this is a bar graph. Uh, we can take a look and see that a bar graph, it's a graphic representation of something. So we can see, for example, down here at the bottom, we have days of the week and temperatures along the side. So we can see in a very visual way how hot or cold, rather, it is a certain day. So Monday, we see it's 8 degrees, Tuesday, 6 degrees, and so on. And this shows us a very nice visual representation in order to compare uh, several things at once. Okay, so in order to make your own bar graph, we need to start out... Um, by making our own graph. So usually when you do this, you start out with a table. So here I have a table, and in my table, um, I can see here, I have um, D stands for days, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and then degrees Celsius, so the temperature in degrees Celsius, we have 8 degrees, 6, 5, 3, and 5. So it reads across in this way, Monday it was 8 degrees, Tuesday it was 6 degrees, and so on. So I want to use this table to draw a bar graph so I can have that nice visual representation uh, to show the temperatures of the days of the week in order to compare them. So starting out, I want to start out with my y-axis, which will run. Actually, let me undo that and grab a different color pen. Okay, so... So starting here, I want to draw my y-axis and then my x-axis like this, okay? And usually when we make graphs, we put time down at the bottom. You don't have to do it this way, but usually that's how uh, we do this. So I will write at the bottom, these are my days. We have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So this where each day the information will be. And then along the side, we have to decide uh, how we want to divide up our numbers. So I want to look here and see that we have a lowest number is 3, and the highest number is 8. So it's kind of easy to go with 0 to 10. We won't need to go below 10, sorry, we won't need to go below 0, and we will not need to go above 10. So... Right at the corner, I can set it as 0, and then I can make some notches up. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And I want to go back and write those in. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And again, on the side, I need to label. So what do these numbers mean? These, these numbers mean the degrees Celsius, so the temperature. And I also want to give it a title. And in this case, I might want to say temperatures temperatures and maybe I could add it make a longer more descriptive title such as temperatures last week okay so when I'm making my bar graph it helps to use color though you don't have to so I'll use a little bit of color here um, in my other example which we'll go back to I use several colors so now we just it's just a matter of looking at the data so the data in the table shows that on Monday it was 8 degrees so then I'm going to come up here to where I see 8 and kind of mark a line here. So the bar for Monday needs to go up to 8. And then I could maybe color it in. I'll just kind of do quickly here. Okay, and then looking at Tuesday, we can see that Tuesday, uh, let's see, Tuesday is 6 degrees or was 6 degrees, rather. So now I can come in and go up to the 6, make a bar, and color it in. Okay, going back and looking at Wednesday. Wednesday, it was 5 degrees. So I take my pen, and I draw it at about 5 degrees, make a bar, and draw it down. Then we can see on Thursday, it was 3 degrees. And on Friday, so here we see the temperature each day is going down, but then on Friday it goes back up to 5 degrees. So I can make this bar here. Sometimes it's helpful if we can go back and write the numbers on top. 
you can see it's pretty easy to read these numbers here, but sometimes it's helpful to see if we just write the number on top. So you don't always see this. In fact, usually you probably don't. But I think it's helpful if we want to look quickly to get information that you can write these numbers on top. Okay, so now we can see how we can make a bar graph giving, given a certain table. So now let's take a look at the different parts of the bar graph and make sure we understand the vocabulary around it. Okay, so again, looking at the bar graph I had made earlier, it's a little bit helpful for us to have different colors just because visually it's easier to look at. We can see each day is a different color. So the whole point of a graph, it's graphic, it wants to, you want it to be visually appealing um, so that when you look at it, you can very quickly understand the information. Okay, so going on to the next Here we have our x-axis. So the one that goes horizontally across the bottom, this is usually where we put time, is called our x-axis. Then running, from top to bottom, or vertically, we have our y-axis, and this is where we have our degrees Celsius. Next, we want to take a look at the x-axis and the y-axis together are called axes. So you'll notice that when it's just one, the singular form, a-x-i-s, but when we talk about two or more, we'll say axes, A-X-E-S. Okay, now we're looking here at our labels. So we had our x-axis and our y-axis, but we need to make sure we put a label. And putting the label on is very simple. You just think, what does Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, what does that mean or what are those things? Well, those are the days of the week. So our label simply is days. And then coming along to our y-axis, we see these numbers, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Again, what do these numbers mean? This means temperatures in degrees Celsius. So I put degrees Celsius as my label for my y-axis. And looking here now at our title, we have to give it a title, just like a book has a title or a table has a title. We do the same thing for the bar graph. We say that this is the temperatures, or we could have said these are the temperatures last week if you want to give more information. So the title is very important. Make sure you always include it up top above the bar graph. And finally, we want to look at scale. So when I'm calculating the scale, um, simply what it means is how much are you adding each time on your y-axis. So for example, we go from 0 to 2 and we add 2. From 2 to 4, we add 2. From 6 to 4, we add 2. And then continuing on to 8 and to 10, we're also adding 2. So if I want to know the scale, we would say the scale equals 2, which simply means that on the y-axis, we are counting by 2. And that also tells you important information because these spots in the middle would be between the two numbers above and below it. So this one, for example, coming back to here, this one, for example, it's between 2 and 4. And right in the middle, it would be 3. So we go up 2, and then if we look at the blue line, it's right in the middle, so in that way we're counting by 1. So 2, 3, and then 4. And that just helps you for reading the graph.